I want to welcome everybody today. Um, Cher for joining me, Cher Cunningham from Cher Cunningham Coaching. I want to thank our audience for tuning in. And I really want to say to everybody, now is a time we're all going through different challenges. Now is a time to communicate. And the fact that we have technology, uh, just because you don't have the right technology doesn't mean you can't MacGyver it. <laughs> Once again, thanks, Cher, for joining me today. Social distancing and isolation is a real issue for people. Today, we're going to talk about some tools and some techniques um, for tolerating the environment that we may currently find ourselves in, in light of this pandemic of COVID-19. So let's... Can I let's, jump in? Let me grab my coffee and I will allow you, I, you know what, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself because I think we can speak to ourselves more clearly than, you know, we know how we want to introduce ourselves to people. Well, you have a sip of coffee, Irene, and I'll chat okay. about who the heck I am. Okay. I, I am so pleased to be part of this conversation with you. You and I go back a ways and you were around when I was a web designer and then I disappeared off the face of the earth. I went through a massive stress year. I separated from my husband. I burnt out in my business. Every website I created seemed to have been hacked. And I kind of fell apart. At that point, I was able to find some incredible tools. Tools that led me to my position now as a business coach, helping other entrepreneurs, often introvert entrepreneurs, avoid the burnout and the sense that your business owns you, that loss of control that comes with being an entrepreneur. Hmm. And that applies so well to the situation we're in right now because it feels like there's so much we can't control. Well, yeah. And for business owners, this is huge. For those that just started working from home, they're trying to juggle so many different things in this social distancing environment. Um, how, how do they do it? How do they stay? How do we stay sane? Like, again, you and I have the, well, not you, that's not true. I have the fortune of knowing how to work from home. I am an introvert and I am isolated a lot of the time to do my work. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. It's good to see you all. Um, again, we're MacGyvering this, so it's not the best video feed but the replay will be better. <laughs> On that note, we are live. Uh, so, okay, um, back to the socialization. It's really bad for our health, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, not to mention the financial impacts and working from home, we may find ourselves trying to do so much more, which is also going to have an impact. Well, you know, I mean, you can get over anything. You know, you'll go through a, a huge crisis and then at the end of it, you recover and you look back and you go, wow, I can't believe I survived that. But it's these slow, moderate, terrifying crises that go on and on and on. There's so much that could happen. There's so many things we're worried that might happen. We don't know when it will end. We don't know how it will end. And all those unknowns are actually harder to deal with than if we had a volcano erupt in downtown Midland. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to go through something where you don't see what the end is. And that's, I think, one of the first things to recognize for yourself. Cut yourself some slack. It's yeah. impossible to plan for a time that isn't defined. That's absolutely true. And, and nor is, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of on, what's the term I'm looking for? It, it's fear, but it's not real fears. You know, we create right, it's imagination mind because we have so much time and there's so, we don't have the immediate answer. So our brains run around. We watched by this stage in life, so many movies about the end of the world, uh, that that's drumming up anxieties in us. We can't turn on the news right now. Like I'm advising people constantly pick one day for the news. I mean, we must be in tune and, and know what's going on in the world, but to have this unindating our world day after day after day, hour after hour, it, we're going to sleep and dreaming this. I don't know about anybody else, but I know I was, and I cut myself off once again. Um, <clears throat> Absolutely. Realistically, you're not making choices that are going to change the fate of the world. So you really only need five minutes of news a day. 
when you spend more time looking at the news, it can start to obsess you. You're telling your unconscious mind that it is critical that I stay on top of this crisis, when in fact it really is not. Right. And when it really comes down to it, nothing is happening right now. Nothing. If you sink right into this one second, this one teeny tiny moment in time, where you've got the time to turn on a Facebook Live with Irene and share, nothing <laughs> is happening. That's exactly. And, and let's utilize that space and that time to fill our minds with positive talk that leads to productive action that changes the course of our life. And today, I really want to talk about that because we have no choice in this current environment. We are in isolation. We are social distancing. We are practicing, practicing such. We are recognizing that the world is going to be a, a we don't know what the world's going to be at the end of this. Um, and how do we prepare ourselves to be the best people we are capable of being to provide us with the resources that we need to think logically, to act efficiently, and to feel competently in this crisis. It's funny because you, we're talking about hypnosis today and we're talking about languaging. You're already hypnotized by the crisis. It has fixated your attention, which is one key of hypnosis. It has absorbed your emotions, which is another piece. And you're creating the purpose behind it, which in many people's case, the only purpose they can find is to be informed. Taking back control over your thoughts is critical if you want to be able to control your emotions because it's what you're telling yourself in that spinning around, like Irene was saying, where you're telling yourself, oh, this is happening and that means this, this is happening and that means I have to do that. When you say, and that means, whether you're actually using that phrase or not, you're putting your own meaning behind the events. Why not take that and change the meaning and be a little bit more deliberate about it? And that means I have a chance to read that book I've been putting off. And that means I have time to write that book I've been putting off. <laughs> Some different meanings for this situation. We can control how we respond to it and how we think about it. Yes, we can, you know, from my training, one of the things, one of the key factors I took home is to, when you feel that complete loss, step back and ask where you're standing. Are you standing in the effect side, which is completely emotional? Or are you standing in the cause side and taking responsibility for what you can do? So that whole cause and effect and which side of the equation do we want to be on? So I love that suggestion. Take that time now to read that book. You don't have to wait to the summer beach vacation. Uh, you have that extra two hours. I find a lot of people at home right now um, that are working from home that never worked from home before I'm telling you that the, the, the Work industries, the workforce industry is going to be different in the future for sure because as we, as, as a lot of people will find now, it's very easy to work from home. Um, <laughs> different levels, right? I love face-to-face -face meetings. I prefer to be in the same room with somebody. I find rapport is a real connection between people that I do much better when I am face to face, it's almost like that rapport helps us build that third person, that creativity, that problem solving um, container that we can be in. So getting used to some of the disconnect of Zoom, the different sounds of it, um, getting that feeling of connection from, from it really is going to require a bit of practice. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, but what the, what I, the point I was going to get to was I think people are finding um, when they say, okay, you know, I have these files that have to be done, data entry, I, I'm picking a job out of the air. So data entry, for example, uh, I have to get these files done today because they've got to be submitted to boss A by Friday. And they sit down to do it. Normally, that would be in a, a, a day's worth of adventure in the office. Uh, and they're finding they're done by two in the afternoon and they're feeling like they haven't actually worked. Have they actually done their job? Are they being productive? This is something, you know, I, I, I've heard a couple of people saying, hi everybody, I've heard a couple of people uh, responding and saying things to the effect of, 
Um, I just don't feel like I'm doing enough. I, 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 I'm an achiever. I'm a, you know, overworkaholic is what I recognize it to be in myself. But um, I think a lot of people are struggling with those types of things. So one of the things that I found most effective for me is that uh, positive self-talk. We all do self-talk. And most of the time we're saying, I'm not busy enough or I'm not doing this, or I should be. I hate the should have, would have, could have. They're dangerous. Uh, so how do we get beyond the should have, would have, could have? Now, I mean, I have, I, I know, but I'm, I'd, I'd like you to tell us or tell our audience the best way to get past the should have, could have, would have in self-talk. And I think there are different techniques that work for different people. So what works for you may be a little different than what works for me. Having the, so I'm wearing my business clothes today. I'm sitting in my bedroom. I have a, a background, a fake background behind me that makes it so you can't see that my closet's disorganized and doesn't have closet doors. The bed's over here and my cat is also right behind me. So setting up a fake environment of this is where I work now that my office is closed. This is where I sleep, this is where I eat, adding some structure to my day and realizing that the goals that I set, you know, back in December last year, I set a whole bunch of goals for the coming 18 months. I've had to revise those a little bit. I think we all have, yeah. And if I hide from the fact that things have changed, I don't want to hide from it. Things have changed. We are in a pandemic. We are in a global crisis. And I'm not making decisions that will save the world. However, I'm making decisions for my world. So I need to acknowledge that things have changed and then adjust my goals accordingly so that now I have new goals that are relevant. Looking at those previous goals about, you know, standing on a stage doing workshops and, and speaking, those yeah. aren't happening. And even the organizations with, that I was going to be doing that for haven't adjusted to be able to turn those into an online venue. There's a new reality. What yeah. new goals are relevant that I can set myself when I don't know whether we'll be back to work in May, June, September, October? I don't know when that will happen. So it's about creating artificial deadlines and really recognizing what are my work times. I'm at home. I could work 24-7. I don't want to do that. Right. That's just the recipe for stress. Well, I think it is very important that we segment, segment our days based on the newness of our environment. Um, actually schedule time. This is work time. This is meditation time. This is kid time. This is family time. And all the space in between is whatever it will be and allow it that way. But to maintain strict schedules like wake with the sun and go to bed with the sun or whatever your sleep routine, a healthy sleep, sleep routine for you is, should be implemented perhaps at this time. And maintaining a healthy diet, not wasting that space or, or time and space. Um, I hate the term, but filling your face, you know, Cheetos are not the answer. <laughs> 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 I know, I'm finally putting on weight. This is good. <laughs> and looking forward, so we talk about being toward people and away from people, and we have both when it comes to motivating ourselves. So we can use getting away from pain and discomfort, whether it's financially, emotionally, physically. We have our away from drivers that keep us surviving. But it's when we create goals that we have something that we're working towards that we can work towards thriving. So writing that book or reading that book are toward goals. Unless you're afraid someone's going to find out that you didn't read that book, then it's an away from. Okay. Building a healthy balance of both will help you also stay motivated and make sure that you're moving towards something. And if you're moving towards something, then you get to feel good about yourself. Even if it's moving towards, I, I baked two loaves of bread yesterday. Right, right. I haven't yeah. been shopping. So it's something to celebrate so that you can build into your day times where you say, I've achieved something on my list of things to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a quick note, um, in, in, 
we know that neuro-linguistic programming is the way to talk to yourself and the way to set yourself up to be able to speak to your subconscious and get it moving in that direction. Um, we know that hypnosis can be very effective for uh, impressing those ideas into our mind, I guess is the, the, the term I'm going to use at the moment. Um, how would you say that those could be applied at home right now for our viewers? What can our viewers do to deal with all the, the, the just the, the, the multifaceted challenges of being socially distanced and, iso and or isolated? Well, NLP it really is just very clear communication. In the past, people have thought that NLP was the language of manipulation. And manipulation can be used for good or evil. When you're using manipulation on yourself, ideally you're going to only be using it from a very positive standpoint anyway. Uh, it's about choosing really deliberate words that are rich in meaning and that resonate within yourself. So self-hypnosis is um, something that allows us to be very deliberate in how we talk to ourselves and in an altered state. When we go into trance, which we do many, many times a day, you've been in trance watching the news, I'm sure, you are more suggestible. You're more ready to accept the things that are being told to you. So self-hypnosis is an opportunity for you to take your imagination and use it in a powerfully positive way to put yourself in a state of calm, of confidence, of creativity. And in doing so, it gets you out of those states of helplessness and anxiety. I've actually prepared a couple of um, free resources for your viewers if you look on the page that this is going to be on, that will give them an experience in mindfulness, which is deliberately stepping into the now and saying, in this moment, nothing is actually going on and truly experiencing that moment, as well as a free course in self-hypnosis and how to deliberately speak to yourself in a way that works. Yes. So. You know, you'll get affirmations and you'll say, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And it does nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> affirmations can work. Yes. Affirmations can work. However, they need to be your words. They need That's to be right. a visualization that resonates deep in your heart. And you need to empower them with imagination using visual cues and auditory and the kinesthetic, that feeling inside of you. What's very interesting is if I think about anxiety, my body has to create anxiety for me to understand what is anxiety. If I think about confidence, my body has to create confidence physiologically for me to even understand the meaning of the word because all emotions have a physiological component to them. So a very simple thing that your viewers could do right now is just remember a time when you felt really confident, a specific time. You, something just went really well. You knew you had the skills, the power, the energy, the opportunity, and you felt confident. And as you remember that time, just step into that time as though it were happening right now. Relive that moment, seeing through your own eyes, hearing through your own ears, and feeling the feeling of confidence in your body. What happens in that moment is that your brain creates the chemistry, the physiology, and the meaning of confidence in you. It becomes a complete change in your physiology and your brain chemistry. Absolutely. Choosing to do that lets you do a nice nervous system reset. You'll find you're breathing deeper, you stop breathing from up high, you start breathing deeper in your body, your shoulders will go down, you'll activate your vagus nerve, which is fantastic to reset your nervous system. And all of that will happen automatically because your body and your unconscious mind knows exactly what confidence is. That's right. That's right. 
One of the things I found very effective and very useful for self-hypnosis because I, like many people, years ago started trying these nighttime meditations or nighttime, you know, YouTubes that come down the line. And I would get irritated by different things like the voice of the hypnotist or the music in their background or their language didn't match my brain. I'd be in a nice, calm state and all of a sudden they'd say something that just didn't click. So of course, you know, the hypnotic state was broken. That being said, one of the things I found most useful is journal keeping. I think journal keeping is so essential for anyone and everyone. We all have private thoughts that we know aren't necessarily uh, cohesive. Work them out on a piece of paper. But in this particular case, what I'm proposing is having a journal of this is the state I would like to be in. These are the times that I remember. Write them out. It gives you both a physical and a visual attachment to it. Reading it a couple of times before allowing yourself a five minute or a 10 minute meditation hypnotic hypnosis state. I think it was you who had suggested to me in the past even recording this. So it's my own voice, my actual language, talking to my unconscious mind or subconscious mind for three to five minutes. And in that time, as you say, that physiology, phys you, you change, you, the, the, you need things that were asleep are no longer asleep. <laughs> You're sparking up the neurons that activate the, the state you want to be in. And a little codicil to that at first you might hate the sound of your own voice you will get used to it three or four times in you will get used to your own voice That's and right. just remind yourself of that because you're hearing your voice from outside your head everybody hates their voice at first another thing that can be very valuable to know is that when you put yourself into a deliberate trance state just a light trance state what happens is strong negative emotions don't exist there. You're actually moving where your thoughts are taking place in your brain out of that reptilian base of your, your brain up into your cortex, which is much more resourced. And it's taking you out of that limbic center of your brain where all your emotions are and being deliberate about where in your brain your thoughts are happening, which is kind of a different way of considering how our bodies and our minds work. Um, we actually practiced uh, doing learning state, which is just taking the time to get eye fixation on a, a spot that is up in the ceiling. And as your eyes start to get tired, you focus deeper and deeper on that one spot that's maybe you know right up as so though you're almost looking through your eyebrows. As your attention gets absorbed into that spot, just as your eyes start to get fatigued, suddenly become very aware of your peripheral vision. And as you become aware of your peripheral vision, take a breath in and a breath out and imagine that you can wrap your peripheral vision 360 degrees around you, as though you have eyes in the back of your head. I, now, confusion is a wonderful way to get into trance as well. When you see instant inductions into hypnosis, confusion is usually the method they will use. When you confuse yourself through your imagination in that way, you go into a, a deliberate light trance that removes anxiety, worry, fear, doubt, grief, and shame, and just puts you into more presence, awareness, expansiveness, and curiosity. It's just physiologically how it happens. Right, right, that's awesome. I'm hoping that all of our viewers have gotten uh, a really good idea of some of the tools that are available to them. In particular, um, there is a lot of information about NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming on, on, on the internet that they can download or access. There's all kinds of information about the benefits of hypnosis. Um, there's also guided help available, and I thank you so much for making some of the some of your products or resources available for free. There's the downloadi downloadable audios, and uh, you had a few other things in there too. So the link is on our page at a wordsworth on greenirene.ca. Um, that's where today's post will be. It'll also be posted to Facebook and other social media accesses. This video will be available as a recording. 
Um, I really, you know, we've talked and chatted a little bit more than, than, than we anticipated, but hey, this, <laughs> this is live and it is wonderful and it's been a very valuable talk. Before we wrap up, is there any top three, or, you know, the top tool for moms stuck with the kids, the top tool for parents stuck with, or parents working from home? Uh, or someone working from home, and the top tip for the person who's truly isolated with no other voices other than the television and or the computer. Well, we could do 20 minutes just on that. So the top tip for moms, you're not a teacher, you're not in a school. Stop beating yourself up trying to get your child's education in. Enjoy and explore topics that are of interest to you, and take this as a time to just be together uh, realistically, we, we expect so much of ourselves, more than we possibly should. So stop it. Yeah, Have fun with your child. Let them explore. They are going to get a little bit more screen time, a little bit more reading time in, and playing in the backyard. Top tip for if you are self-isolating and you're looking for other voices, reach out and connect to people on purpose your sister your mom your friend have coffee like i'm having with irene here just get together play with zoom and get that face-to-face -face time you need to be deliberate about it and actually for all three of those situations when you think about it happiness and joy living a life that is fulfilling is intentional it doesn't just happen it's not one of those things if it was meant to be it would happen Right. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. We've heard that before, and it is so true. Be intentional. Learn how to experience joy and happiness. Develop yourself. Take time to grow and celebrate. And build stuff in to celebrate. I made bread. I'm going to celebrate that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I didn't do much. I made. I didn't do much extra. I made. You know, my, my life hasn't really changed that much, except I don't get out as often for coffee, breakfast, or, or brunch, you know? <laughs> I don't visit three or four times a week. But other than that, my life is pretty much the same. So it's been very awkward for me trying to um, uh, uh, understand where somebody's coming from. It's not that I don't get it. It's simply I, I'm not experiencing that. I'm not having that experience. Introverts have been training for this all their lives. <laughs> yeah, there's so much social media posts and memes and stuff that go around. They're hilarious. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, help is available. Guidance uh, for working through this. If you want your own program, go and check out Cher's uh, information on her site. Uh, you can find her at ShareCunningham.com. You can find more information about today's post and uh, video, video log, blog, whatever, whatever these are. Uh, you can find all that information at greenirene.ca. Just look under productions and you'll find a words worth there. On that note, I'm going to say thank you so much, Shara, for joining me today. I love chatting with you. Um, and I think the information you have is very valuable to our viewers and our listeners. Um, I look forward to having another discussion with you next Tuesday for treatment and therapies and talk. Oh, thanks for having me. This is fun. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and thank you for joining in. Remember to come back tomorrow when I'll be talking with Kim Cooper. Um, and we're going to have a weed or we educate conversation about socialization and using cannabis to cope. We're also going to discuss a little bit about which strains of cannabis are very effective for helping you to get into that calmer state so that you can self-medicate. Uh, I myself cannot meditate if I am a vibration <laughs> of anger or frustration. However, after a quick puff, I can mellow out and I can do a self-hypnosis self technique or a meditation technique. So on that note, remember to come on back tomorrow. Join us. Uh, here at 321 Go, a word's worth with Green Irene and guests. Thank you. Thanks, Irene. Are we done? Okay, are we done? Uh, our live video has ended.
And thank you everyone for joining and it's been shared. I will have to adjust that and modify it and all that sort of jazz after the fact. How was that for you? That was okay. Yeah. Little, you almost need a little signal for, ooh, we're, we're transitioning back and forth or something, but. What do you mean? You know what, when you move, you can tell you've got a screen around you because yeah. you block, see? <laughs> it tries to figure out what's background and what's body. Yeah, yeah. I think that's hilarious. As you can tell, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm in my dining room. All right, have you stopped recording your Zoom as well? No. Oh, yes. No. 